First of all, I learned to obtain perspective. Uh, since 1981 till today, we have seen an unbelievable fixed income boom market uh, ensuing on the back of very high and distorted uh, interest rates uh, at the end of 1981. However, when we look at the past 100 years, be it in the US or in Europe, we've seen that 10-year rates on average have been fluctuating between 2 and 4 percent. So we believe that now we're in the second distortion of unbelievable low rates in Europe and that it'll take time to dismantle that situation. Second, I learned to be patient. In a sense, we see that monetary policy from the Fed or the ECB has become a lot more protracted. Currently, markets are pricing that a normalization of Fed policy will take at least another three years to obtain a terminal rate between 2 and 3 percent. So against that background, we will need to really focus on how the regime is evolving. And if we talk about a regime, the current regime is one of low inflation, low productivity growth and a very prudent business cycle. It's only when we see the regime shift another gear to the upside that we might have policy rates above 2% in the US and policy rates above the levels we see today in Europe. And third is that smart diversification, risk control and flexibility are key ingredients for a successful bond strategy. You have to be present in government bonds as well as in corporate bonds. Within government bonds we see at times value in Eurozone markets as well as in OECD markets and more and more in emerging market government bonds. And on the other side of the spectrum you need to have income generation which investment grade corporate bonds, high yields up to convertibles allow you to do. Our main conviction is do not be afraid to diversify globally. However, in order to do that, you will need a seasoned team of experienced portfolio managers, credit analysts, quants and economists. Currently, we have that. So that took us towards an overweight emerging market bonds at the beginning of 2016. It also engaged us in having a positive tilt towards investment grade corporate bonds during Q2 2016. And since September this year, we became very positive on global inflation linked bonds, given the very cheap inflation expectations priced in. On the other side, we went underweight Eurozone government bonds, as we do not believe that current valuations or valuations during the summer with 10 years below zero was concurrent with economic conditions. So you'll need a balanced exposure to all of these sectors and with respect to currencies, we do see that the dollar appreciation has not come to an end. So we still see a chapter of dollar strength versus the euro in order next to the internal devaluation we've witnessed, uh, especially in the periphery in Europe, that the eurozone will have to go through an external devaluation and together which will make for a more balanced global picture uh, in terms of uh, fixed income valuations. Thank you.